So I used to have a work iPad. I would open it on my commute. I could see how many emails I had. And it was so tempting just to do it. Sometimes I would arrive home, I would be cooking dinner, but still thinking about work at the same time because I haven't properly stopped. It's just uh, always sort of nagging away in the back of my head. It used to be the case before the advent of modern technologies that you know you'd work nine to five. You know you'd, you'd leave the office at five o'clock. You couldn't check your email in the evening. You, you know you wouldn't be contacted by phone, and so you'd have a very clear separation between work and life. Um, now, of course, that's all completely different because we've got you know email twenty four hours a day. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. We've got LinkedIn. And we've got all this digital technology that can be a great thing because it brings a great amount of flexibility in terms of allowing you to work from home and so forth. But it can also be a problem because it means that you're, you're always on and you're always expected to be on. So the concept of work-life balance is, is changed. You know, it's, it's no longer a single switch from work to life in one day. Now it's very rapid switches all the time. You go home, you're with your family, but then you switch because you see something on Twitter that's related to work. So you're switching all the time. And there's a real question whether that's a good thing or not in, in today's society. So Digital Brain Switch is a research project about understanding how technology influences people's work-life balance. So coming across from social science and computer science, we want to understand how technology influences people, how people use this technology, at the same time, what kind of technology we can build to help people. So the project was in two parts. The first year, we really spent a lot of time understanding the problem of work-life balance in a digital world, primarily by engaging with people just from normal walks of life. We gave them a video camera to carry with them for a week and make video diaries. From that, we got a huge amount of data. If you just interview people about their experiences, they tend to give you a kind of rationalised uh, perspective on their lives, an abstract perspective on their lives. But if you get them to video what actually happened to them, then you get much more of an idea of the kind of contradictions in people's lives uh, and the paradoxes and the things that go wrong and the things that they don't expect. So it allows you to capture all those sorts of moments. What we tried to do in the second half of the project was to design a system where people could experiment with different strategies for managing their work-life balance, and this is called My Life Rocket. We very soon realized that we needed to design an open system that would allow people to experiment with their own particular issue and try to understand and reflect from their own personal point of view. Because I'd made the conscious decision that I wanted um, some work-life balance, this study kind of allowed me to experiment and think and give me the headspace, I think, to think about some of the techniques or some of the rules or restrictions I wanted to put in place to make sure I had a better work-life balance. I think that's one of the reasons why quite a few of us were interested in taking part, to sort of try and establish those networks of methods and ways of working. So it would be good to just see if we're all doing things the same way or if other people are doing them slightly differently. In the general work-life balance literature, there's, there's a big emphasis on people taking responsibility for their own work-life balance and trying to get their boundaries right. What's one of the things we want to challenge through our research, actually, is to say, well, it's not just everybody's individual responsibility, and there are other, other players in this that have to take responsibility too. I think we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, really. I think there's, I think there's a lot more that can be done, but I think this two-year project, relatively short period of time, took a very multidisciplinary approach to this, got computer science and social sciences working together, it was a really good way to get the conversation started and to start that research into what can really help people in managing their work-life balance.